after flirting with the world of male stripping, can Channing Tatum convince audiences to go all the way? You're watching Beyond the Trailer's review of Magic Mike XXL. I got a little treat for y'all tonight. We are gonna see if he still got some magic in that mic. Tomorrow, start the pilgrimage to Myrtle Beach for the convention. Well, I'd say it's still your day, man. <laughs> the first Magic Mike was relatively tame, more of a way for Channing Tatum to own his stripping past rather than be embarrassed by it. The film showed off a few butts, but nobody did the full Monty a la Michael Fassbender in shame. The dance routines were also more bar mitzvah than erotic strip club, cutting away before anything truly risque happened on screen. That strategy also resulted, though, in co-stars Joe Manganiello and Matt Bomer largely riding around on the editing room floor only. But like all sequels, Magic Mike XXL is upping the ante and as a result diving deeper into the world of stripping. What was a mere flirtation in the first film has become a full-on excursion and perhaps more revealing of the taste and judgment of someone who would turn to stripping in the first place. Yes, that's right. Tatum didn't think it would be cool to be a stripper or simply strip for his friends. He was a legit paid professional stripper. And now that he's got your attention, he's pulling you up on stage. Will audiences be game to go? Magic Mike XXL also features more diversity, perhaps to fend off wannabe competitors like Chocolate City. And while Magic Mike XXL has lost some star power behind the camera, with Steven Soderbergh stepping down as director, he's still the DP and editor. It's gained some new stars in front of the camera. Elizabeth Banks, Andy McDowell, Donald Glover, Michael Strahan, and Mrs. Johnny Depp all join the cast. As does Think You Can Dance star Steven Twitch Boss and Ellen's famous shirtless gardener. But Channing Tatum is still front and center. A risky move, resting this entire sequel on his pecs alone, considering recent flops Jupiter Ascending, Foxcatcher, and White House Down. In fact, Tatum has yet to duplicate his boffo year in 2012, where The Vow, 21 Jump Street, and Magic Mike put an awful lot of bills in his box office G-string. So is Magic Mike XXL a return to glistening greatness? or the movie equivalent of a stripper past his prime dancing to a mostly empty room. Sad strippers. Surprise! That's what you get when you inject character development into a film about strippers. Uh, well, maybe not sad, but like wistful and remorseful, which really isn't the vibe that you want in a strip show. Uh, now, that said, Magic Mike XXL is not a bad movie, and if you're looking for some action, you're definitely going to find some here in this sequel, even more than was in the first film. But I, I think that romance and, well, there's no romance with strippers, but the illusion of romance, sexy time, requires some mystery. Uh, but this, with this film, they, they pull back the glittery curtain to such an extent that I think that while, again, you will get lots of action, you're going to feel like you're still in the friend zone, right? I mean, how can you have magic, you know, Magic Mike, if you know how and why the tricks are done, right? It just doesn't quite work. But to, to Channing Tatum's credit, I think he has tried really hard here. You can just tell watching the film that he has paid very close attention to all the feedback he got from the first Magic Mike, right? Uh, there is a much more diverse representation in terms of who this movie is trying to appeal to, right? There's uh, a scene at a gay strip club. Uh, there's a scene at, uh, you know, a black strip club. Uh, and then also, Matt Bomer and Joe Manganiello have much bigger roles. Maybe removing Matthew McConaughey, uh, and he has, his, like, the memory of him really does hover over the entire movie. I guess they were like, we can't just pretend his character never existed because he was so powerful, so let's find a way to, you know, propel us into the storyline for this film. I don't want to give anything away. I will be doing a spoiler review uh, Tuesday morning, so if you're watching this, uh, you know, past uh, Tuesday morning, June 30th, the spoiler review is up because we have lots to talk about. And I have to say, they did get me with the stripper routines. I did have a favorite, which I will divulge in the spoiler review. But by removing Matthew McConaughey from the equation, there just seems like so much more room to breathe. Now, granted, 
the movie does miss his crazy weird energy. Uh, but because I think Matthew McConaughey isn't there and his star power isn't there, that doesn't need to be fed. And Channing Tatum, you know, being the producer and having lived this life himself is much more diplomatic. All the other cast members are given a lot more room to, to dance. Uh, and not only do they have longer routines, particularly Joe Manganiello and Matt Bomer, but their characters are so much more developed. If you're a fan of either individual, uh, you will enjoy seeing them get so much screen time, both with their clothes on and off. Uh, they by far and away, I think it was uh, them and Channing Tatum were the real stars. Also Amber Heard. Uh, you know, the acting here in this film is actually also pretty good. I even liked Amber Heard in this film. I thought she did a really nice understated job. Uh, but then they have also guest stars and someone who went, one of, one of the furthest performances, I couldn't believe it, was Michael Strahan. I didn't even notice him at first because I was like, I, I, my mind couldn't even comprehend that that was Michael Strahan dressed as he was doing what he was doing. But Michael Strahan owned it and every guy in this movie owned it. Uh, and I thought that some of the, you know, you know, being true to themselves, uh, and I don't, again, I don't want to give too much away because I think it's important that some of the uh, elements of surprise here are really effective, but, you know, they all, you know, they're new routines, I guess, let's say, and some were really laughably dumb, I felt, personally, although, again, we'll discuss in the spoiler review, but some were, like, bordering on, like, Cirque du Soleil-level artistry. It's like, you know, you guys have, like, a future, perhaps, in, like, performance art. Like, it, there were some really, uh, you know, top-notch sequences that, that that were worth a dollar. Uh, although some, some women in the film were really making it rain. And I have to say, one of the interesting things about watching this is how it breaks stereotypes about strippers, right? Like, for so long in the movies, we've only seen female strippers, right? And there's always the really hard and fast rule of don't touch, right? Like, the guy, this bouncer will come beat the crap out of you. And, you know, and the strippers live in fear of, like, being touched by the customer, right? Well, not so in the world of male stripping. It is so incredibly interactive. You're like, wow, like, this is like, like, I, I guess it's good to know what you're getting into if you do go to a male strip club, right? You're like, I'm going to be expected to participate. I better be prepared for this. Uh, and I was uh, thinking about it, and I guess the only thing I can think of is that uh, since they're they're men and they have you know they're strong men are stronger than women uh, it's it's a it's a biological fact you know that's the norm usually I guess they don't feel that they're as vulnerable as female strippers which I think is a valid point so the and also I guess with the, the needs you can really see the needs of you know the female audience for male strippers versus the need of the male audience to female strippers it's kind of interesting in and of itself and they want to if they want to continue with this franchise I guess they could explore that now you might be thinking. That seems awfully intellectual, Grace, for a movie about strippers. But I'm telling you, this movie is trying to be very intellectual. You know how guys like to say, oh, I read Play Playboy for the articles. Well, there are a lot of articles in Magic Mike XXL. They are freaking editorials, and you have to read all of them. And some of them are actually pretty interesting. But then I think it's weird to read a really deep uh, editorial and then turn the page and see, like, a guy centerfold, right? You're just like, oh, wait, you got to prepare me for that. And I think that the movie has a little bit of, like, a split personality. Uh, and as I said again, it really is just, you know, like, the first one was a party. The first Magic Mike was a party at the strip club. But this really puts you in the position of being friends with the strippers, right? And it's very different when you're friends with the person up there. Although I think they got some really great friend moments out of the movie, uh, which were a lot of fun and, you know, and then you know what? They put a smile on your face. And, you know, I do, if you're if you're very interested in seeing how far this goes, or you just want to talk about the movie, because, again, as I said, there's lots to talk about. Uh, I hope you'll head over to my um, spoiler review when it goes up. But here, I think the perfect note to end on is that, uh, you know, Channing Tatum promises in the film that strippers, I guess in particular male strippers is how he feels, will put are guaranteed to put a smile on your face. And they do. And this is definitely, if you don't want to go to an actual strip club, you will not find a better option than Magic Mike XXL. Even better than the first film, because again, it's how far they go here. But the magic, the magic is gone. I don't, it's just, it's just Mike. And he looks good. But I think we're a little too close to Mike, maybe, to, to get that, you know, to get that uh, tingly feeling. I'll say it. The movie puts you in a crazy mood. Uh, but, again, if you're looking for a stripper film, my advice to you is go. Uh, but, you, you know, it's almost like, hey, go in and see that strip show, but then in between dances or afterwards, 
ask the stripper how they feel. You know, find out a little bit about them. And if that appeals to you, I think you might really like Ma Magic Mike XXL. But I think they don't have to do that with strippers for a reason. All right, so I'm very excited to talk to you guys about this down below because Channing Tatum at least is trying to improve, trying to do something new, and he tries a lot of new stuff in this movie. So write your thoughts down below. Don't put any spoilers down though, uh, and we will discuss uh, the movie at length in the spoiler review. All right, thanks so much for tuning in, uh, and you can check out some other episodes right now.